Hello, hi and welcome back to uh, Pete's Plastic Playground and uh, it's good to be back and uh, I did threaten to be here more often uh, after my last video so here I am once again. Hope everybody had a good Easter um, and uh, that seemed to fly by pretty quickly didn't it even though it was a bit um, uh, bit indifferent weather wise. Um, so I mentioned last time that I've got an impending hip replacement coming up and what that means is six weeks of recovery afterwards which will mostly have to be sent spent in this very comfortable chair which is perfect posture for recovering from a hip replacement um, and so I'm going to have a bit of time on my hands for building a few kits and um, so I thought for this video just do something a little bit different and um, I've decided to create a top 10 list of potential builds from my stash as it is now so it's not a top 10 of all time airfix kits although i you know a bit like choosing your favorite ever song i might like to do that one day because going back in time there have been some absolute crackers you know really the old kits that we remember when we were kids like the um the bit of lace b17 and uh, with that evocative box art um, and so pot potentially there's a video on that basis but this for the purpose of this one today is just for me to share with you what I fancy doing while I'm off after my hip replacement so without further ado here we go with selection number one choice number one the 172 scale Mustang now it's a tiny little kit but I just absolutely love it. It comes in so many different colour schemes, a number of which I've got with decal options and so on. Um, I've built probably about four of these now and I never tire of them because they're so satisfying when they're done. Um, it goes together really, really well. And I think it's a lovely subject as well. The Mustang's a wonderful aircraft. Uh, the only bit I'm apprehensive about is the old um, the old aerial mast, which um, generally tends to be uh, one piece of swarf um on the uh on the sprue but anyway so there's number one the 172 scale north american p51d mustang choice number two is this fantastic 172 scale hawker typhoon mark 1b now this one's a little bit special because i brought this down at um they call it the wonderworks now don't they the actual um hornby headquarters now um on the occasion that I bought this it had only just been released and I was working in Kent so I shot in there and I met shook hands and had a little chat with none other than James May and we had a little chat about this particular kit this model and he said he was a big fan of it I've built probably four or five of these now there were a couple on my tank diorama um, that are zooming over the um, over the scene so the Hawker Typhoon is choice number two Okay, so here we are. Um, choice number three is this um, 172 scale English Electric Lightning F6. Now, this will probably be my favourite variant of the Lightning and also my probably my favourite um, iteration of the Lightning in 172 from Airfix. Um, you know, this this is one of the ones with the modern tooling, which is to such a high standard and it's such a pleasurable build but what really got me most about when I brought this home from the model shop the first time I opened up the box and I actually commented on Airfix's website actually that there's an absolute real chunky pack of plastic in there and I just can't wait to get stuck into it to be quite honest I have built one before I uh, can't say I did a particularly good job unfortunately but um but this this is absolutely marvellous and loads of detail um, and so selection number three is the Airfix 172 English Electric Lightning. Number four and we're all at sea with HMS Fearless which in actual fact in this case will be HMS Intrepid. Uh, I already built Fearless and um, again it's another old gem of a kit. It's from the Vintage Classics range and I intend to make a dockyard scene with both ships um, alongside together cross berthed so um so this is it from me this number four selection hms fearless which will become hms intrepid 
really 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 nice build and thoroughly enjoyed it so uh, there we are vintage classics kit number five in my uh my my potential builds for my recuperation is this frs1 c harrier um i've always had a bit of a passion for um naval aviation from all areas you know it's just fascinated me but especially the sea harrier because it's such a special aircraft uh regular viewers may remember the um skyhawk and a4 uh, sorry the a4 skyhawk and sea harrier dogfight double that i made and mounted them on a frame i just think it's a great little build doesn't take too long to do and I might do it just to practice some airbrushing techniques. But again, it's a really, really nice little kit to build. And this time I might try and get the cockpit canopy on straight. Okay, selection number six is the Airfix 172 Hanley Page Hampton. We're all crying out for a reissue of this one. And uh, because it is such a, I think for me personally, it's a fascinating aeroplane. Um, early stages of World War Two, it was in use and um, a fairly rudimentary thing in terms of the development of light bombers. But uh, I just think it's a really nice looking aeroplane. If you can remember the original Airfix box art, I mean, it was just so engaging from the, you know, from the word go, from the minute you looked at that picture, you just wanted to get the, get the kit built and finished. Um, I have done a Hampton before, probably about seven or eight years ago. I broke the aerial off, the little round aerial on the um, on the spine of the aircraft. Um, and in fact, I actually glued it on the wrong way round as well. I had it going across the aeroplane instead of along it. So I'll correct that little um, faux pas on this occasion. And I might even try and build it in flying configuration and put it on a stand. But who knows? I'll surprise myself on that. So there we are, the handy page Hampton. Number seven, this brilliant 172 de Havilland Mosquito, the bomber. Um, I've not built this new Mosquito yet. I've got this one and the photo reconnaissance one in the stash. Um, the only mozzie I've ever built before is the old 172 fighter with the um, with those cannons that stick through the nose of the aircraft and always, um, if you don't drill them out enough, they always snap. And if you do drill them out enough, you're left with a gaping great hole. So um, so I fancy having a go at this one. This is one of the recent issues from Airfix. And, the, you know, it's just the best subject, isn't it, really? The Mosquito, what a classic aircraft. So um, that's number seven in my selection for, um, for my, my forthcoming session. Number eight. Um, a classic subject and one of the more recent issues, it's a, a retooling from Airfix. Um, we've all built the old, um, the old original 172 Flying Fortress, I should imagine. I remember it from my childhood. My dad had a fascination for the Flying Fortress because um, when he fought out in the Far East, he used to see quite a lot of them. So he's always, you know, he was always fascinated by them and as am I. Now, I last built the um, the B-17, uh, the old variant, probably, what, 12 or 13, maybe longer, 12, yeah, 12 or 13 years ago, maybe longer. Um, and I was really pleased with it. It had the bit of lace transfers on it, the old nose art on there, and um, all the turrets worked, all the all the uh, the guns moved and so on, and it, I was really happy with it. But sadly, um, it was hanging on the ceiling in the old man cave, but um, sadly, it didn't survive the move. Um, it's, it's in bits, and it went in the recycling box in the end. I was quite sad about it. But anyway, it's gone now. So I intend to replace it with um, with this. Now, I know this one's a fiddle. I know there's lots of detail inside, but perhaps it will be something that I have running alongside another build. Um, so, But I would like to have another B-17 on display somewhere in uh, in the man cave or even if um, Mrs Pete's plastic playground agrees it might go on the sideboard but um, we shall see um, so there we are that's uh, selection number eight the FX 172 B17 G flying fortress so the last two that I'm selecting I've uh, 
the, the last two that I've uh, left until now, I think are my two favourite subjects that I'm really keen to get stuck into. Not least because I have um, an enthusiasm for the uh, Coastal Command um, selection from the uh, fr from the Royal Air Force. Um, I, I just like the colour scheme. I like the activities of Coastal Command. That it's um, and I think that all ties in with fleet air arm stuff as well. I think aeroplanes flying over the sea for some reason fascinate me. So one that I built before is the Mark Eight Wellington, um, the uh, the Sub Hunter, if you like, with the um, with the elaborate radar arrangement. Um, I enjoyed building the Wellington so much last time that um, I really am quite keen to do it again and perhaps iron out some of the um, errors that I made before. They're only minor. On the whole, I was pretty happy with it, actually. It was a, it was a good build. But I do fancy doing it again. Um, I've got other wellies to do in Bomber variant in the, um, you know, in the sort of traditional traditional sort of layout but uh but yeah i fancy i do fancy um having a go at this one so uh that's number nine okay folks thank you for sticking with this so far and um hopefully found it interesting so we're at um we're at number 10 um and this is uh this is my favorite this is the one that i'm going to do first and this is one i've really been looking forward to and again it's coastal command and it's the 172 Armstrong Whitworth Whitley Mark 7. So it's the GR Mark 7. Um, two colour scheme options in this one. There's a civilian post war um, version. Um, actually, I don't know if it is post war, actually. It might even have been during the war it was used as civilian aircraft. But um, anyway, I'm going to do it in Coastal Command colours as per the box art uh, because I just love this plane so much. I did build the bomber before. And I had a bit of a disaster because, um, in, because I'm sort of so, so naive and trusting of Humbrol products. I used their um, clear gloss varnish, and unfortunately, it's um, calcified or whatever it does. Um, it's solidified, and I ended up with white, um, white chalky marks all over it, and it ruined the model. Now, I really like the shape of this aeroplane. And I really like, I, I, God, crikey, I'd, how I'd love to see one fly, but that's never going to happen. Um, I like the shape of it. I like the sort of 1930s art deco appearance of it, if you like, particularly when you look at the, um, when you look at the, the sort of chin of the aircraft there, that shape of it there, it's, um, it's kind of, um, it's, it's very unique, very distinctive. So um, to have a little look in the box, um, the colour schemes are um, are here. Um, here. Here we are, Heathrow Airport, 1942. So during the war, um, it was used as a BOAC aircraft. Um, it's actually on the decals. It actually got a decal that says British Airways, which is well ahead of its time. I'm doing Coast Coastal Command. So um, that's my turn. Um, here are the decals. Um, very bold ones for the Civvy one. Um, very bold serial number and so on, um, but otherwise fairly simple for a for an early early war bomber. Uh, the destructions are here, all very clearly laid out. And as I say, it's a sort of modular build where you build the um, you build the the front section of the aircraft in one piece first, and then it all sort of like slots together laterally. And um, I just found it absolutely intriguing to build last time i like the the um the uh, vertical stabilizer arrangement as well it's um really good 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 bit to build and uh, here it is unopened bag of plastic ready for me and i think within probably three days of coming out of hospital i'll be applying a sharp knife to this bag so there it is my top choice at number 10 is the the Whitley in Coastal Command livery. Look at the, um, the the weathering that you can that you can put into this as well around it's a good the engine. List. We'll wait until your birthday. Oh really? Okay. That's the voice of my cameraman behind the scenes dropping a little clue in there. You might change your mind. <laughs> So my target is to get out of hospital before my birthday. So my op's on the 22nd 
and um, it will be happy birthday about three or four days later. So I should be out and home in time and uh, up and about, well, I'll say up and about, I'll be on crutches and uh, in, um, I'll be high on, uh, high on painkillers, <laughs> which is quite nice. But I reckon within about five, six days, I'll be all right to come out here um, in the warm, in a nice comfortable seating position to, um, to sit and sniff some glue and uh, and start building um look i hope you've enjoyed this video it's slightly different um a bit different from what i've done before and i have to say it's my son's idea to do this and uh, i've got him to thank for that uh, for that suggestion and maybe next time what i'll do is um is we'll do an all-time top 10 of uh of 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 of, uh, of airfix kits to build um you know it's there's such a wide variety to uh, to sort of choose from and and it is just it's, as i said earlier on it's like choosing your favorite song of all time you know it happens to be the ones you think of at the time and then you hear a song and you think oh yeah i didn't think of that but um there's some um, just something a bit different if you've got some um, any suggestions from um from what you've seen in 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 this selection of of what you might uh, what you might consider building, then uh, then please comment. But um, apart from that, thanks for watching, and uh, see you next time in Pete's Plastic Playground. All the best now. Cheers.